darling. Junior's falling asleep. Good. Look, he's the first who's not scared. It's a break for us, less problem with clots. Pat, couldn't I keep him as a pet? I thought I was your pet. Set him on the table, honey. He's so young, so trusting. Trust me, he must be just a baby. Pat. The others were too old. Maybe that's why we failed. This is your fifth try. It seems so pointless. Four wasted lives. Monkey lives? And is it pointless for animals to help save human life? One soldier, one mother in an auto accident, one half-drowned boy, one baby girl, feverish with freckles and a dimple? You're right, darling. I'm being silly. Thanks, dear. Now go make us one of those wonderful stews, will you? She is really something. So are you, pal. Okay, you're on. This is the day I feel it. Me too. In about 30 minutes, we'll have a monkey brain. Alive. Is that a monkey in your suitcase, or are you just excited to watch another one of my reviews? 1953's Donovan's Brain concerns a rich man that gets in an accident and ends up in the lab of a scientist who's been dicing up monkeys and putting their brains into fancy aquariums. Along with a surgeon Lush and the scientist's assistant wife, the three attempt to save the rich man. Unfortunately, their attempts flatline on the operating table. Thinking quickly, the scientist's mad light bulb shines fiercely, and he decides to stick the dead man's brain in a vat, just like the monkey brains. With apparently no one missing the rich guy's gray matter, the scientist successfully preserves a living brain, which somehow survived death. After careful research, a discovery that the brain is growing and flourishing, in fact, and ordering his wife to make him a sandwich. Look, go get the portable radio, will you? And the soldering iron. And a ham sandwich on rye. The scientist figures out how to communicate with the brain through psychic experiments. As soon as the mental rapport is established, the scientist leaves town and begins to make questionable transactions at banks in the city, threatens politicians, and ends up on the wrong side of the law. Mystified by what is going on, the surgeon and the scientist's wife become alarmed at the scientist's ever-erratic behavior and the ever-growing brain floating in the lab vat. Donovan's brain starts out with some big ideas that turn out to be not worth exiting the skull. We are treated to the dated quaint prospect of monkeys having their brains removed and placed into fish tanks, drunken surgeons with hand tremors, and eventually the psychic powers of one rich dead man's brain dominating the wills and minds of the living around him. You know, with items like that, you would expect a zany movie with a lot to offer in terms of entertainment. I mean, this was the golden age of B-movies, right? Well, while the acting is good, unfortunately, after the movie gets going, the excitement just outruns the story and we're left kind of trudging along with a plot about a rich man's brain using a scientist to cash checks. Yeah, that's all the movie is. A guy taking taxis back and forth from the lab to the city, cashing checks and being a generally unpleasant possessed man. To what end is all this for? We really never figure it out. Apparently, Donovan, the rich man, had some conspiracy in life to influence politics. And eventually, it seems that the brain is trying to continue this plot. It aims to fund an even bigger fish tank in a bunker somewhere. It's a brain fart in the end. The brain is a movie monster villain. It's about as dull as you can get. This isn't the brain from Planet Eros, folks. It only floats and slightly grows in size over the movie. The brain remains mostly silent, although it does have one emotional indicator in the form of a beeping electric meter. So, uh, imagine if your microwave tried to get an acting gig. It's never as threatening a monster as it is just a silly oversized goldfish. The movie was adapted from a book of the same name by Arthur Kurt Seelbach. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Interesting name. And has been made into movies multiple times. I haven't seen the other movies, but if they're anything like Donovan's brain here, it might have been better showing us a movie where a monkey's brain controls a man to run out and steal bananas and eat bugs and stuff. That would have been pretty entertaining. Donovan's brain does have a slightly Lovecraftian vibe, which is interesting. It basically mimics the plot of the case of Charles Dexter Ward and The Whisper in Darkness, for a few obvious reasons. That said, as I haven't read the actual book, Donovan's Brain, I can't say how good or original it is. But Stephen King is apparently a big fan of it. Given how the missteps that this movie takes are mainly the movie's fault, as far as I can tell, it might be worth checking out the book, and I plan on it. Overall, I give Donovan's Brain two monkeys about to go night-night permanently out of five. All of these things are designed to frighten a monkey.